Okay, so today we're going to be talking about two books. We have The Whispering Dead by Darcy Coates, which is a horror, and Pirate Latitudes by Michael Creighton, which is a pirate adventure. Both of these reviews are going to be spoiler-free, so you're safe to stick around, but there will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. First, all the... Oh, the Whispering Dead by Darcy Coates. This is a horror. This is my first Darcy, Co Darcy Coates. I'm gonna try another one of her books, but I didn't love this. We kick off this book, uh, we kick off this book following our main character who is being hunted down by people. She's lost her memory. She doesn't know where she is, who she is, why she is, or why she's running through the dark being chased by people who want to kill her. She stumbles upon a cottage uh, of a pastor, an old pastor who lives on a cemetery, and he takes her in and she's able to dodge her killers and lets her stay in the cottage on the other side of the cemetery, essentially. And it's haunted. That's the basic setup. So she, she doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know what she looks like until she looks in the mirror. She doesn't know anything about her background or even her likes and interests. She has a very unique uh, form of memory loss. And she doesn't know who she is or why she's being hunted, but she does know there are ghosts here and she has some sort of connection to them. So she would like to do what she can to help them. So I am a huge fan of ghosts and hauntings and like that style of of horror. Uh, I looked it up. This book is classified as horror. That is the genre that it's published under. I would disagree at that genre choice. Um, this book is prime. It's not really spooky at all. Um, there might be a couple of mildly creepy scenes to someone who likes a very light horror, but there's really a lot more focus on our main character exploring this small town and making friends and uh, learning about the history of the town than there is on the ghost or the haunting itself. Uh, there's a few things that felt very inconsistent to me uh, in, in that like sometimes ghosts were trapped at their grave and that's where their spirits hung out and sometimes ghosts were trapped at their death site and that's where they hung out and it really just seemed dependent on what the plot needed to happen. There was no reason for why ghosts were trapped or stuck, why their spirits were, were um, hanging around in certain places, whether it be where they were, where their body was buried or where their death happened. It just, it just was dependent on what the plot needed to happen. The characters were really good. The pastor that takes her in is funny and sweet and just a wonderful character. I loved every scene he was in. Our main character was, you know, pretty good. I liked her. Uh, the two characters that she develops friendships slash relationships with, uh, I loved. I thought that they were fun and unique. And I think the character work is definitely the strongest part of this book. I, it's a very short book and I enjoyed reading it just because of the characters. I'm a very character driven reader. So, you know, there's that. And the plot itself sounded really interesting, but we just spent a lot more focus on getting to know our friends and getting to know the town than to actually focus on, you know, the ghosts and f solving this mystery and figuring out what happened to them. I wouldn't say that the plot is anything terribly unique. I feel like I've read this basic idea, this basic concept and what it is the ghosts are trying to communicate to her. I've read this before. Uh, but I mean, that's fine. I still enjoyed reading it again. It's a plot line that I like, but it's a horror. <laughs> and I was excited. I was excited to hang out with creepy ghosts and get some very unsettling scenes. And you know, it, it wasn't, it was, it was a lot more, um, casual and light and like a, I'm realizing I use the word light, uh, much more loosely than most people would. So I'm, Trying to think of a better way to describe this. It was just, it felt more like a contemporary with a couple of spooky scenes. And I wanted to like it because I loved the characters so much, but I didn't. So I'm gonna try another one of her books because I want a really good haunting. That sounds great. Next we have Pirate Latitudes by Michael Creighton. This is a pirate adventure story. And unfortunately, this is my least favorite Creighton that I've read so far. It's still good, but, um, not my favorite of his. In fact, my least favorite so far. So Pirate Latitudes, Pirate Latitudes is a book that 
was published after Creighton's death. I can tell that Creighton didn't polish this as much as he would had he been able to see it through. Creighton has always been, at least all the books that I've read of him, he's always been a slow build kind of guy. He likes to really establish setting and tone and characters and then just run with the story. And I do feel like this story did this, but it did it in a very strange way. We spend the first little chunk of the book, like five chapters of the book, um, following the perspective of a character that isn't our main character. And so I'm like, I'm in his perspective, I'm with him, I'm getting attached to him, I'm getting into the groove with him, and then we meet a different character, and then that's the character we follow. And it's not like this is a throwaway character at the beginning of the book, but why did we do this? <laughs> um, there were scenes that felt so abrupt and fast, like big, intense scenes that it was like, oh, that's over now, and we're doing something else. Okay, which I typically love Creighton's pacing. It's slow but intentional. And with this, I could tell he was trying to do a much more fast paced adventure, but sometimes it felt really abrupt and jarring. Uh, certain, uh, keeping it spoiler free, certain major events to the plot and to the conflict that we're facing that was just like, oh, that's over now. All right. And even some of the character stuff um, that just felt incomplete. Uh, but there were still characters that I really loved. La Zoo is maybe how you say the name. I'm actually not sure. One of the crew members was someone that I, I really enjoyed the scenes of. Um, and Anne. I really, I really loved Anne. I think that she was a very fascinating character and she deserved more page time. But for the most part, I couldn't really attach to very many of these characters because they are not morally gray, they are bad. Um, and I, it, I, I get what, I get what Creighton was going for. He was going for a pirate crew. He wanted an authentic pirate crew that was really focused on being bad people. And he, he did that, uh, but he did it in a way, like it wasn't, it wasn't Abercrombie. <laughs> That's so unfair. But it wasn't, it wasn't like, I've read a lot, I've followed a lot and loved a lot of books where we're following people that are just awful people, that make terrible decisions, that are not doing good things. But I love them and I love following them. I find them fascinating and nuanced and and very, very human. And though I would never want to know them in real life, I'm just very, I'm fascinated by following their stories. And that is not the way I felt about these characters. They generally just came off as awful people. <laughs> And that's fine. That didn't necessarily bother me, but it also didn't make me ever attached to them in any way. Except for Anne, she was fascinating and she deserved more page time. With Pirate Latitudes, I actually, I actually did enjoy reading it. It was very fast paced. The adventure was fun. There were so many very exciting and fun and explosive scenes. Um, and I think Creighton did a good job of having a plot that that just kept moving and that um, was really, really fun to read. But I, I definitely think that the quality of his other books and the depth of his other books is much better. And I can definitely tell that he didn't finish this one. I think that he could have polished this to make it so much stronger, uh, but he didn't get the chance to do that. I don't feel like I can actually talk about this book appropriately because Creighton didn't finish it. This isn't how he wanted me to read it. But it was a really fun story. If you're looking for an action-packed, fun pirate story with some very piratey characters, some very uh, not good guys, good people, this is that. And if you, if you go into it knowing it, then like it is a fun time. I did have fun reading this. It just wasn't nearly as good as his other books, in my opinion. Those are my thoughts and opinions on The Whispering Dead and Pirate Latitudes. I would love to discuss it further with you. Have you read either of these books? And did you like them? What are your thoughts about them? I'd love to discuss it more in the comments. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon.